just moving from one event to the next and sort of you're just zeroed in or you're just too focused in doing these things that you know you disregard the people that are impacted or really the people that you are serving trying to serve to uh, reach out to that they don't, sort of don't matter anymore you know I got to do this mission I got to do this event you know uh, so what is the point? The point for, for today's lesson is don't get so wrapped up in doing the doing side. So don't get so wrapped up with the activities, the events. And as we get closer to the holidays, there are many, many events that will be coming our way. So, you know, uh, be mindful of what really matters. Uh, be mindful of that that we not, should not get wrapped up with the doing side, that you neglect the loving side of the faith, that we are reaching out to people, especially the loving of lost people. So fourth bullet here, don't let your heart grow cold. Be careful as you mature in knowledge. It's not bad that we gain knowledge, but we also need to learn. Uh, as we gain knowledge, character, worship, that we also mature in compassion. For those who are on the fast track towards destruction, especially those that we know that are going the wrong path, you know, uh, have comment here. Jesus is saying to be careful. Those are all good things, what I mentioned earlier, but be, be careful we don't get so wrapped up in it. All right. Uh, again, don't let your heart go cold. Next slide. All right. As we grow. As we mature, all right, not grow older, as we mature in Christ, all right, and our walk, continue to walk with Him, all right, uh, unlike the Pharisees that as they grew older, they can then, what happened to them is they, they became cold. So, in essence, the challenge for us is as we grow and mature in Christ, that our hearts should be softer now. We should become, uh, uh, should become towards spiritually wayward people ought to see the world in a, in a different light. You see, you have now a bigger a burden of what is going on with the world or what's wrong with the world. You ought to see the scripture more clearly. ought to see the eternity more clearly. ought to see heaven and hell more clearly. The older you get, the deeper you ought to feel about the plight of people who don't know God. All right. There is that danger of the reverse that we grow cold all right uh, one story here is that uh, uh, at a pastor's conference all right some time ago the speaker asked about 400 pastors uh, he asked the question when was the last time any of you any of you even had one dinner with a non-christian has any pastor one of his follow-on question was in this whole group of 400 had a single dinner with someone who was far from God in the last 12 months. Guess how many raised their hands in the 400? Nobody. Nobody. People started looking down, searching for stuff in their pockets, huh. avoiding contact with the pastor. So it was clear that it was a very uncomfortable situation at that convention. So, you know, uh, this is a lesson that it's not only pastors. We could also be in that situation. That we too can be, you know, uh, once we're asked, when was the last time that you had a dinner? You know, hopefully we don't start looking down and changing the topic. All right. So, next slide, please. Are we growing? That's my question. Are we growing in tenderness toward lost people? Our, our desire to do something about it? Are we aching for our families, for our friends and colleagues that still don't know Him? Amen. Or are we getting bolder and more creative in our personal evangelistic strategies? Or do we, did we start crawling out of our comfort zones and stop taking risks? Do we start, you know, finding ways, you know, uh, starting to move from our favorite seat, should I say, you know, or changing or, you know, 
going uh, to someone purposefully rather than just by accident or avoiding people? Are we devoting quality thoughts to how we can keep mixing non-Christian people? That we, you know, uh, sort of look for ways that to bring them together. We may not have that uh, sort of the confidence yet to share the word, but you know, uh, mixing it up may be a way or a tool to bring people together and to get you know, for other Christian friends to be able to share the good news to others. Just you know, expand your horizon or your your circle of friends with creating that balance. Or are we becoming increasingly isolated and cut off from the very people we've been called to, <coughs> to reach? Right. Are we just staying with our Christian friends and sort of started avoiding our non-Christian friends? So if we are growing, then our compassion should continually also to grow, not go the other way around. So let's try to, if we're sort of just staying in our comfort zone. She's all right. <laughs> let's pray that we find other ways or to get out of that comfort zone. Amen. Next slide, please. So the question is, what about us? What about you? The question for you is, do your lives evolve around the church? Do you do Christian service? Lots of it. Do you hang around with Christian people most of the time? So do we ever do we barely have contact with the needy people that need the, that, that need God or that are lost? Do we reach out and even bother calling them? Hey, how are you guys doing? No. That that little touches. How about striking up a relationship with a with a spiritually mixed up person, you know, hang out with them, pray for them, or have a conversation. It doesn't have to be about salvation. It could be, you know, anything. Uh, interestingly, one of our my coworkers, uh, sadly, she was uh, released from our office, and uh, she really felt bad. And as she was leaving, I said, uh, really. I'm sorry, but I said, I'll continue to pray for you. So, out of the blue, that's what I told her. And not knowing what she would say, because she might, you know, uh, it's very hard and very strict in the federal uh, environment to say these things. She said, thank you, please do continue to. So, you know, I was surprised and yet touched with her response uh, to that, to that uh, action. So, also, you can consider throwing a monthly party to start stir things up. Mix it up with other people. Because you never know, you might be that critical link. Yeah. You know, uh, the link or that opportunity wherein that person would reach out, would finally sort of break. And that breakthrough that you've been praying for. Or that somebody else is praying for. Yeah. All right. So it is important that we strike a balance. Uh, this is not in your slide. So uh, it is important that we maintain contact with our believers. We need to give spiritual support. We serve others. Uh, we also need our Christian friends to pray for us as we, when we go out and reach out, when we go out and minister to them. Uh, because if your friend is really a friend, and a brother or sister, that uh, sometimes we fear that you'll be judged, and there shouldn't be, right? Because they're there as an encourager, as an, uh, your accountability partner to serve you and serve others as well. So if your friend is really there for you, and they, then they should also understand that you want to do this. Right. So next slide, please. So, who, me, all right, is the title of that. So the challenge for us today is, one is, there's four things, all right? The first one is, let's try to be a contagious consumer, okay? 
the scenario here is that you know we do we have a lot of errands we go to a lot of stores be it your favorite restaurant your grocery stores your dry cleaners or your walmarts or the commissary or whatnot for whatever it is you you have this routine that you go to all right uh, why not you know uh, use that as opportunities start praying okay of all these places let's say in a restaurant maybe strike up a conversation with if you have a favorite uh, uh, waitress or waiter you know strike up a conversation uh, especially in those establishments where you are a regular all right establish rapport with personnel serving at restaurants cleaners groceries and all stores okay and usually in these mom and pop stores it's the same person right so uh, target opportunity there. A little thought and prayer could cultivate contagious relationships. All right. So you know, just reaching out and saying hi and sort of letting them know, hey, I've been praying for you, or just strike up a conversation. Another is recreation exercise. Why not a round of golf or any outdoor recreation? So let's say if you're good at golfing and. You know that your friend also likes golf and or don't know golf then an opportunity uh, it could be anything it could be just walking or whatnot you know uh, I know there's those there uh, people just walk around the malls right you know, don't have to shop but you can walk around the malls all right um, shopping may not be a good Recreation and or exercise, all right? As God leads, strike up a conversation deeper into personal and spiritual matters. And if, if, if you've been praying for that person, then I'm sure God will give you that opportunity, that window to use so that you can reach out to that person or strike up a conversation, something that you both have in common. Next slide, please. This is more difficult. Civic, community, school, or political involvement. We, as Christians, have become too secular. I mean, what, what we have around us has become too secularized because Christians have huddled back in their churches. Because we have said, we don't want to get involved anymore. It's just too difficult or too worldly. It's too, you know... Uh, the question back to us then is, how would they know about us if we just fall back in here? Amen. How can we be part of you know, defending our faith and knowing, being recognized as part of the, the, the community if we all fall back to our church? So we miss opportunities to hang out with non-church people. All right. So let's figure out ways and pray for ways that we can get involved. Not be the politics, it may be something else. So, you know, uh, I see a lot of parents, so the school is maybe away or uh, for whatever, forever, wherever, or whoever, or whatever organization you guys also volunteer to or are involved with. You know, it could be even the, it could even be the SPCA, you know. Uh, so, anyway, the last one is the workplace. So it is always a challenge being at the workplace to be the salt and light. Amen. So we are always going to be a minority. So let us, let's not just hide out. Uh, don't let that overwhelm you or overwhelm us. Reach out to brothers and sisters that can also be an encouragement uh, to pray for us, to encourage us. You know, find one or two you feel have, that you have some affinity with and in whom you sense some spiritual openness. Start taking your breaks or lunch hour with them. You know, just strike up a conversation. Strike, you, know, you begin it with a friendship. Okay? Uh, the last point here is break out of your comfort zone. We all need to get out there. Uh, and that was that's the key here is you know, we got to not just hang around with us, and that's how we, we reach out to our neighbors. 
So next slide. In closing, remember the spiritual rookie Matthew, the despised tax collector, and upon his conversion, all right, he threw a, a party in order to get Jesus and his disciples rubbing shoulders with his fellow tax collectors, with his fellow, with his non-spiritual friends. So he came up with that idea so that, you know, at least those two can get together. Jesus also reminds us that a doctor ought to be strategic and spending plenty of time with the sick. That we need to be out there in the trenches reaching out to others. Uh, and lastly, that we should be balanced with the limited hours that we have to invest in the kingdom. And a portion of our time needs to be spent rubbing shoulders with people outside of God's family. Amen. So there is a balance that we need to strike. We need to find that. <coughs> we ought to find that balance so that we can share what God